A Southworth duplex boiler feed pump service. This one is part five. Today I am working on the steam cylinder end of the pump. As shown in the previous episode, the pump is now in two halves and in this state, fitting the new O-ring glands is a simple job. I cleaned some of the parts that were badly oil stained and they look much better now they're fitted to the pump. Here's the steam cylinder end of the pump with the pistons and cylinder covers in the foreground. I cleaned up the cylinder cover on the left hand side by spinning it in the lathe and using a piece of Scotch-Brite. I will repeat this job on the right hand cylinder cover. Here is the steam cylinder end of the pump and as you can see I've removed the valve operating mechanism. The two halves of the pump, the steam cylinders and the water cylinders, are held together with three pieces of steel bar, three sixteenths of an inch diameter and threaded 2BA. This pump is well made, the only thing I can fault it on so far apart from this bolt with the nut fitted masquerading as a stud for the gland on the piston rod. All the small fixings on this engine are fitted with washers but when I put it back together I am not going to fit washers to the studs on the glands because I want the gland stud nuts to bite into the gland which will help to stop them working loose. Over now to my wonderfully useful Warco WM180 lathe. This is a great little machine and it's ideal for the sort of jobs I want it to do. For instance, here's the gland in the chuck and I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper to clean it up. Normally I would apply the sandpaper underneath, but I didn't in this case. Not good practice. It's better to apply the sandpaper underneath than if it tears your hands moving in an upward direction. Here's a view of the cylinder block with the new clean gland cover in position. Complete with a pair of O-rings that you can't see. As far as I can see, the problem is that these holes in the glands have been machined a bit too deep. You could get away really by using graphited yarn instead of O-rings. I've decided to try and use two O-rings in each gland, which should be successful. This, by the way, is a shot of my very long narrow-nose pliers. These are proving to be a very useful tool in the workshop for manipulating small parts. Sometimes I do use small surgical forceps, but I do find these to be a little bit more sensitive. All of the small surgical forceps that I have all spring lock together. That means if you squeeze them, they lock in that position to hold whatever they're supposed to hold, like an artery. When using these small forceps in spring mode, to hold small nuts and bolts, often the parts ping out of the end and you never see them again. All of the glands on this pump are very similar to each other. The two for the valve rods are a bit smaller. And this is a pain. With a very small spanner, I'm trying to undo the nuts that are fitted on the end of the valve rods. Once the nuts were in range of a socket, obviously I used a socket, and then the job became a lot quicker. Not this quick though, the video is running at a higher speed. Two nuts removed and two more to do. You need a delicate touch for these sort of jobs, the parts are very small. And also it's really important not to drop any of the components on the floor. This clip shows one of the gland covers removed and you can see the original o-ring in position. And in this clip, on the right hand side is the o-ring that was fitted and on the left hand side is a brand new one that I'm going to fit in its place. Top tip time. If you have a MIG welder, always snip off a few pieces and keep them in your toolbox. They will prove very useful. Here for instance I'm using a piece of MIG welding wire to keep the nut in place while I spin it into position with a screwdriver blade. After the nuts are 100% engaged with the thread, it's a simple job, even though it's a bit long-winded, to use a small spanner to tighten them up. You cannot get a socket in, as the nuts are too close to the centre boss. I would be tempted personally to use small screws, although the studs and nuts do look better. The depth of the hole in the valve glands is not as bad as on the piston glands, but it's still too deep for the o-ring size. I was wondering if some very thin silicone rubber tubing would do, the stuff that you would use on a model aircraft engine. 
But no, I need to pull myself together. I'm just replacing these like for like. Having said that, I will only send it back to the customer once I am happy with it. And that will be after much tweaking that's about to come, that I won't show on the video because it takes far too long, and a steam test that I will show as a video. As you can see, the valve operating assemblies are now back in position. Time now, I think, to fit the steam cylinders. First of all, a generous amount of steam oil in the first cylinder. And a generous amount of steam oil around the piston ring because I forgot to do this. This bit is important. You have to make sure that the piston is in the right position. What I did notice was the threads on one of the piston rods are slightly longer. And when I screwed the pistons onto the rods using the circlet pliers as I showed earlier, the left hand one was fine. Here, using an extension to my screwdriver with a socket on the end, I'm tightening the left hand lock nut, whilst holding the piston with the circlet pliers. Same procedure for the right hand piston, plenty of oil on the piston, plenty of oil in the cylinder, and exactly the same process as I've just shown. With one minor exception, as you can see, the piston has gone too far down the thread. So before tightening the lock nut, I need to wind the piston back a little bit, so that both of the pistons look more or less exactly the same. I don't want to be picky because this pump is very well made, but the piston rods are a little bit too long. And in fact, when I first ran this pump, I could hear one of the pistons making contact with the cylinder cover, but the knocking could be due to incorrect adjustment. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.